All right, so I'm going to teach you about the next two things in that mini menu that we pulled out here. Um, all of these things are really fun to just mess around with. But so now here I am on this. Um, I'm sort of zoomed in on these artboards, and I might want a little bit more space. So I'm going to press Command minus and zoom out a little bit. I still have these two artboards down here, but I know that I'm going to need more. So I'm going to show you guys how to use the artboard tool. So down here, this little rectangle with corners on it is our artboard tool. And it labels our artboards number-wise. And then anytime you see this sort of, um, it looks a little bit like a post-it with the corner turned up, that means new a new something. So this is a new artboard. You also will see a similar thing in layers. Once we get into layers, it means a new layer. So I'm going to press new artboard. And when I press new artboard, it's going to create an artboard that's the same as the last artboard I created. And I am going to make two more artboards. I know I'm going to want at least six. So I'm just going to drag it, drop it, and I'm going to make one more new artboard and drag it and drop it. If you want to make your artboards different sizes, you can change those. Oh, sorry. Dang it. You can change the size of your artboard up here. Right now it's the width is eight and a half inches by eleven inches. That's what we want because it's a regular size piece of paper. But you can make artboards all different sizes. So when I make um, wedding invitations, and I have to make an invitation and an RSVP card and, uh, um, I don't know, like a program. I'll make the artboards all different sizes because those are all different proportions. And then I can look at them all together on the same desk. It's really nice. If you're going to create um, a business card and a letterhead, it's nice to be able to see everything on one screen. So you can change your size of artboard. That's our artboard tool. Okay, back to our drawing tools. These ones are wacky. You can get sucked in. Uh, rectangular grid tool. So if I drag my rectangular grid tool, it's just going to create a rectangular grid. I can press my up and down keys while I am holding it, and it will make fewer um, and more. As I go up, it's more rows. And as I go down, it's less rows. And then if you go side to side, it's columns. So to the right is going to be more columns. To the left is going to be less columns. So those are the controls you have while you're dragging. There we go. And once again, if I were to click off of this, I know that it's not going to appear there because... Can anyone tell me why? It's okay if you can't. But um, that's because over here, I don't have a, a stroke. So I need to make sure I have a stroke. I clicked on this little black one, but if you just double click on the stroke, a dialog box will come up and you can make it any color you want. Again, you can change the stroke weight. So if I were just to click and not drag, there's a lot more information on the rectangular grid tool options. We have our horizontal dividers and vertical dividers. Those are our rows and columns. But you can skew those. Right now, these are skewed at zero. But if you tweak it just a little bit, so a lot of times in this program, if you just give it like a little bit of a percentage, it's going to show you what that tool actually does. So let's skew it like 23%, the horizontal dividers, and I'm going to skew the horizontal, I mean, sorry, the vertical, negative 23%. What crazy thing is going to happen? I don't know. Ooh. So there, we have the grid is a little bit off kilter, so maybe a little bit more exciting or interesting. Maybe you skew it a lot. Let's try. What happens when you skew it a lot? skew this one like 80 percent. All right, so now those are much closer together. It's skewed towards the bottom. Yeah. 
So I'll teach you about this last one and then I'll just give you some time to play around. Um, this polar grid tool is useful for if you're making a target or if you're making a bullseye. It's a drag. If you drag it, maybe it looks like, um, that sort of looks like the top of a stove to me. It's a little bit skewed, so I'm sort of stretching it to and fro. This is a time you may want to hold shift. If you hold shift when you're making this tool, it will keep it a perfect circle. So now each of these things, each of these little dots, means that each of these is a different path. So if you choose your direct, direct select tool and click on this path, I can just get rid of some of this stuff if I want. If you select your polar grid tool and just click, oh, that's not what's supposed to happen. Here again is our dialog box and it gives you a lot of different things you can choose from. Skew, how many, <laughs> concentric means the circles that go inside of each other and radial dividers mean the lines that divide it up. So say you don't want the radial dividers, you can just put zero of them. So I'll let you guys play around with these things. So for the rest of the class, I'm just going to have you play around. I want you to have four, at least four artboards filled with experimentations on these things. You can do it however you want. You can change the color. You can change the line weight. Um, but just mess around with them. Try to get some different spirals. Try to get some different um, grids, some interesting grids. Use Try using your direct select tool. Anything you want to experiment with these. And that is what you're doing for the rest of Friday. Dang it, that didn't record, I don't think. Uh. Oh yeah, it did. <laughs>